Welcome to Learning to 3D Model in Vetric Aspire. Episode 3 Yoda. So let's get started modeling this little 3D relief of Yoda from Star Wars Episode 3. I'll have a link in the description below where you can get this image that I used. And if you're liking this series of 3D modeling tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you can be informed each time a new video is released. So I'm going to open up the downloaded image in Adobe Illustrator. And if you don't have Illustrator, you can use whatever program you use to trace images. Inkscape is one that you could use. It's free on the web. So we'll just open up Image Trace in Illustrator. If you don't see it on your screen, you can go up to the window and just make sure it's checked. So once we open that up, we're going to go to the preset option and we'll go down to silhouette. Let's make sure that clicks. Silhouette and I'll make a silhouette and you can expand it and you're just going to save that to your folder. Save on your computer and just save it as Yoda or whatever you want as a vector file. So once we finish that, we will open up Aspire and we will create a new document and I'll just make it 10 by 10 by 1.5. Make sure it's very high resolution. And then we will open up our images. This is the one off the web. And we're just going to resize it to where we want it. Now I've already created this model, so I'm just going to show you the highlights of what I've done. If you want to see a more detailed tutorial on how to do the vectors and everything from scratch, look at part one and two of this series. So we're going to have layers for each item that we're going to trace with the vector lines. We're just going to make sure the Silhouette, after we load it in, is lined up with the bitmap image from the web. So the process we'll do once we have the image and the silhouette loaded and lined up is we'll create the layers for the different parts that we want to stick out from the profile body. So we'll have the head as a separate component, the arm, the hand, the eyes, the nose, and we'll have the indents for the ears and the cape. So once you've created all those layers, you can go and click on the head layer and that's where you'll start. And we'll make the vectors using the create line tool in our drawing tools. So we'll zoom in so we can see the head properly. And make sure we're on the head layer and you'll just go around creating your vector around the whole head now like I said I've already done this step and this is what it looked like so you'll just want to go and do that for each individual component and I'll just show you uh, really quickly one particular component, how you could go about doing that. Like I said, if you want more detail on creating vectors, you can see part one and two of this 3D modeling series. So you would just click on the eyes layer. If you want to do the eyes, you would get an oval tool or ellipse tool. And you just put it basically in the spot that you want it because you're going to node edit it to get it to look like the one I've already created there. So you make sure it's selected and you hit N on your keyboard or you can right click and enter node mode, node editing mode, and you would just adjust your nodes until you get it to the shape that you like. I'll just quickly zoom through the process for that 
And once you get it to where you want it by adjusting the handlebars, you can add points if you want, delete points, just to get it to the shape you want. And I just deleted that. That was just for example. So after you've done that, you'd move on to the other body parts that you want to extrude from the body, make it look more 3D. You see I got the hand done there. Uh, just to show you here, you want to right click on the image when you're starting out your vectors and you would f fade it to where you can see the lines and the image at the same time. I usually go around 15% depending on the image. So once you get the image to look the way you want, and you can go in and finish your vectors. So you would do the cape. You can take a look how they look. You got the cape. That's for an indent. Now you would, when you're making the component for that, you would go the opposite direction, same with the ears. Instead of extruding it, you would indent it into the body. And you can create the nose and the indent in the other side of the cape. Your arm. And once you get all the vectors done, then you can start creating your components. Okay, so to create your components, you're going to go into dual view mode, go to the modeling tab, and you just want to select the body profile line first, and we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. So you just want to make sure you get the right line. You go up to your layer, deselect or select whatever ones you need to, to get the profile line, make sure that's selected and that it's closed, and you go to your create component. Alright, so we're going to use the dome shape. We're going to have the angle fully up to 90 degrees, and we will click apply. And we're going to use the scale to exact height, and then you can adjust exactly how high you want that shape to be. And that's just something you're going to have to play with. You don't want to go too high or you're going to be beyond the material, possibly, how much space you actually have to work with once you layer everything up. Once you're happy with that shape, you'll go on to create the next component, making sure that you name your components as you go. Okay, so each component's basically the same. So I'll just show you quickly how I created each component. So you click on the vector for the head and you just model it the same way you did for the body. Just get the shape the way you want it, the base height and the shape height. And you'll just do that for each particular vector. You got the arm, Click on it and just make sure it's closed. If it's not closed, you won't be able to create the 3D component. And you'll just create that component. And you'll do the same for the hand. And now for the indent, you would do the same thing except when creating the component, you'd use the subtract from previous component instead of add. And you would just set the angle and the base height that you wanted. You do the same subtract for the ears indent. You just get, you have to play with it a little bit till you get it the way you want it. And then you'd have the sleeve arm indent on the right. So basically it's the same process for each, either extruding or subtracting. You move on to the nose, 
you'd extrude that, making sure to look at the image in order to the reference image in order to see how far out the nose goes. Do the same with the eyes. Once you're happy with that, you can add the skin and you'll use the bitmap image as your skin. So you would click on the bitmap, make sure it's selected and go up to create component from a bitmap. Now that's obviously way too detailed. So you got to go in and lower the shape height and that won't be so high up and you can smooth it as well. You just play around with that until you get a good mix of detail compared to how long it's going to take you to actually carve this out and how fine of a end mill you're going to have to use. So once you're happy with how you got the skin component looking, you can go in and smooth that component a little bit more. And you would just click on that component, go to the smooth component button, and you would just adjust the slider until you get it to looking how you want it to look. You still want detail, but you want it just a little bit more smoother, but you don't want to go too much or you'll lose all the detail. So when you're happy with that, you can bake it or close it. And you can get into sculpting your model to make all the components fit in together with each other smoothly. So as you can see, I grouped all the main components together as one group. And then you're just going to make sure that you select all the components that you want to smooth together. Just minimize that group. So you start at the top, hit shift, and go all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to group those together. And once you got all those grouped together, you're going to click on it. And you're going to name it. And then you will right click and duplicate that whole group so that you can smooth the copy and still keep the original components individual if you need to edit them in the future. So now that we got the new component duplicated, we will go up to the sculpting tool. It allows you to bake the components together. So you hit OK. And you're going to go in with your smoothing brush. You pick your diameter your strength and your smoothness. You can see the other brushes there. You got your smoothing, smudge, add material, remove material, uh, fix any problems that you had with number five. And then you have your movement button that's number six. So you can also move the model by hitting down Alt on your keyboard while you move your mouse around. Otherwise you won't be able to move your model. You'll be adjusting your strength and diameter of your brush. So we're going to pick the smoothing, set it about half strength and smoothness, and you just start going around all the edges adjusting the size and the strength for what's appropriate for your model and how you want it to look. This is just going to give it nice smooth combinations of the different components and the edges of the model. This is all personal preference. If you don't want it smooth you don't have to do this part but I think it looks pretty good. Get rid of all those jagged edges.
Now you can also do this step without using the skin because you might lose some of your detail if you decide to smooth something. So you could uh, create that component without the skin and then add it later. But if you do want to smooth the skin at all, then you can combine them all together and do it at once. So you just keep going around that until you get it the way you want it. We'll just Now there was a little artifact from the original image that uh, was left over. So you can just go in there with the smoothing tool and just smooth that out until it's gone. You'll see it, you'll still see the remnants of it, but if it's not above the modeling plane, it won't show in your finished model. Now, if you ever, you're happy with where you are in your model, you can hit keep, or if you don't like what you've done, you can hit discard. Now, this is just a personal choice of mine, but I chose to smooth out the, where it says episode three down on the bottom of the model. You can't see the E anyway. So you just adjust your, your, Smoothing tool, click the lower button underneath your dials. And then you can just erase that by smoothing it out. Now when you're happy with the way the model looks, you'll just go up and hit keep. Hit OK. And then you can go to your tooling. Your model is pretty much done. So you're going to go to 3D Finish Toolpath. You're going to start with a 1 8 inch ball nose. And you can see the settings there that I have. You can adjust them as you see fit, as your machine can do. And then if you want further detail, you would go to a smaller tapered ball nose bit. And you just have to judge which one to use. This is the one I use for this one. And that leaves quite a bit of time at these settings that the model's going to take. So you just have to fiddle with that until you get the speed and the detail that you are looking for. And I'll just show you how those two bits will look. Now, most likely for this particular model and size, you'll be okay with just the 1 8 inch ball nose. Otherwise, if you go any smaller than that, you're going to have quite a large cut time. And this is the first layer with just the 1 8 inch. That looks pretty good. You're not losing much detail there. And then the second layer with a very small bit is added. It cleans up the edges a little bit, gives you a little more detail in the eyes. But you just have to ask yourself, is it worth the extra time carving for this smaller model or for this larger model? If you were to go smaller, you'd probably need a smaller bit to get into those fine details. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to hit like and subscribe and comment down below and let me know that you did. It really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.